We are, as it were, in our little ship. And we are traveling through time. We're traveling along a pathway of our life, every one of us, and it might be a little different situation for each one of us, but still it's all the same when it comes to traveling through time. Our life, it's going to come to an end. There is another side. They were passing over to the other side. The ship. Now what happened? Was it smooth sailing? No, it wasn't. We read here, friend, in verse number 24, the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, and the wind was contrary. Oh, friend, we don't have to think much about our little experience in this life to find out this, that it is not smooth sailing. But there's all kinds of trouble in our life. There's all kinds of adversity in our life. There's all kinds of sin in our life. There are things that are not going well. We all have those experiences. Different one from another, no doubt, but we all have such experiences. Here's a little boat tossed in the midst of the sea. Oh, friend, I wonder tonight, as you think of your life, your own experience, do you feel tossed about? Wind is contrary. Trouble on every side. No way out. Don't know what to do. Here's a little boat, and it's just in that situation. Tossed about. The disciples are in it. Then we read there in verse number 25 that in the fourth watch of the night, now the disciples, they see something. They see the Lord Jesus walking on the water coming toward them. We learned that they became very afraid. Oh, friend, no doubt, they, they were terrified because of the storm and the trouble that was about them, tossed about in the midst of the sea. But now it says they were afraid even more. Why? They saw something. They saw the Lord Jesus coming toward them. They didn't know it was him. But the Lord Jesus, right away, verse 27, he speaks to them. He says, be of good cheer, it is I. Oh, friend, tonight, this is such a, a marvelous, wonderful portion of the Word of God. Even though there's fear, there's terror on the minds and the eyes of those disciples, there is one in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the trouble, and he alone is able to cry out to them, to speak to them with a comfort, comforting voice. Be not afraid, it is I. There is one tonight, friend. He is seeking your welfare. He is interested in the salvation of your soul. He wants to save you. He wants you to get rid of all that fear. And on the contrary, to be able to approach the great eternity that lies in front of every one of us with confidence that, yes, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That's God's desire for you tonight. The Lord Jesus speaks a comforting voice to the disciples to take away their fear, to give them comfort and confidence. Then we read something here interesting. Peter is now speaking up. He says, Lord, if it be thou. Or maybe there's a wee bit of doubt there. If it's the Lord Jesus well, he's going to be able to do this for me. And Peter says, bid me come to thee on the water. The Lord Jesus says, come to Peter. He says, you come, come, get out of the boat. Now you picture that. A boat tossed a boat in the midst of the storm, and there is a man, he's stepping out to walk to the Lord Jesus. What is he doing? He is following the invitation of the Lord Jesus to come. Little application tonight. Just a sideline in the gospel here. I know that life has its difficulties. And I know that we can be occupied with all kinds of things, and it happens to me too, with all kinds of things all the time. So busy. Friend tonight. 
Now as I go further, this doesn't apply to me anymore because now I'm saved. But people can become so occupied and busy, and maybe this is you tonight, with all kinds of other things, might be legitimate concerns as we think about life, living in this world, but so occupied that we lose sight of the more important thing, and that is the salvation of the soul. In the midst of the troubles in the boat, you're all occupied just with the storm. But there is one, and he is calling to sinners tonight, come. And we looked at it the other night, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, the invitation of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. What is it that he said? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Listen, that's people with trouble and burdens on their back. This is people that are carrying a load of sin, and they're bothered by it. He says, come unto me. That's the Lord Jesus. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What a marvelous invitation. Here's Peter, and he gets out of the boat to go to the Lord Jesus. I want to get back to the story. He is willing to follow the command, invitation of the Lord Jesus. Now I want to think of Peter as he is making an experience, one that is unique, one that God would like you to make tonight. Here's the Peter walking on the water towards the Lord Jesus. He was looking at the Lord Jesus, but now he's occupied again with the wind and the seas. He's beginning to sink. He's going down. Friend, in this meeting tonight, I wonder as you think about your experience, your life, as you think about yourself, I wonder if you could see yourself in the place of this man, Peter, as one who is going down. Troubles of life too big? Burden of sin too heavy? King David, and we keep making reference to him, but it's very applicable in the gospel. Here's a man, and he made a realization one day concerning his sin. It bothered him that he had sinned against God. My iniquities are gone over mine head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. He made this realization, this is too big. And under this load, under this pressure of sin, I'm going down. I'm breaking down. Here's Peter, and he's going down. Do you think he had trouble to understand that? His feet, with, with which he was just walking on the water, they're suddenly, now they're going down. The man has no trouble to understand. I'm down. I'm going down. I'm perishing here. I need salvation. I need someone to rescue me. Wonder, my friend, tonight, as you think about this salvation that we tried to present to you, maybe I, we, I should speak for myself, not doing a good job. Have we tried to present the salvation to you that God is offering in his word through the gospel? And as you think about this salvation, I wonder, friend, is it still an option? Would be nice to have it. Or is it now maybe becoming, and we got to get to that point, is it becoming necessity? I must be saved. It was underlined already in this meeting tonight that there's absolutely no way. Friend, listen. We seek to speak with love and compassion on a personal note to everyone here that is not saved. You can't go to heaven with your sin. The scriptures can't be broken. The Lord Jesus, he said himself to a very religious, good-living man, friend, a man that I could have never uh, come up to the same level, standard, whatever. 
He said to such a man, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he must be born again. Say it. And just previous, the same account in verse number 3 of John 3, he said, except a man, that's any person at all, men, women, boys, girls, except a man be born again, say it. That's what that means. He cannot see the kingdom of God. There's no way to go to heaven without salvation. So as we think about this salvation that God is offering to you tonight as a free gift for you to take, do you think about this salvation as something that would be nice to have or is it now becoming, hopefully it is, something that you realize, I must have this. And I want it, and I want it now. You know, this man, Peter, here, going down, you, you think about sinking in the water, in the middle of the lake. There is no standing, no ground, no bottom. It just means down, doom, to perish. The man wanted to be saved. He realized the danger. I'm going down. Oh, friend, tonight. We want to warn you again. There is a great eternity ahead. I find it bothersome in my own heart to have been visiting down the road here just a few